Hi there! If you're interested in the color page of DaVinci Resolve 18, well, I'm interested in telling you about it. Here is a little interface tour. So I'm gonna jump in and show you kind of all of the major sections of the interface, give you a short little description of what all the major panels do. By the way, if you want a quick little PDF guide on all of the stuff that we're going over in this video, you can download it for free at groundcontrol.film. Just go up here to editing assets and under free assets, Scroll down a bit, and we have an interface guide for the color page. You download this, print it out, tack it to the wall of your office, you know? So let's start with the most obvious things. Here in the middle of our interface, this is what the person who watches your project is actually going to see. This is what happens on the timeline. Any clip that you have up in this viewer is the one that you're working on in the rest of the interface. You can select the clip that you want to adjust down here in these thumbnails. This is called the clips. And just by clicking on that, you can move in between different shots in your project. Down below the clips, we have the timeline. And this is just a representation of where all your clips are in the edit page. So if you have a clip on the second track here in the edit page, it'll show you a little preview of that here in the mini timeline. Up here in the upper left, we have the gallery. This is where you can save stills. You can save a still by right clicking on the viewer and saying grab still. And this will save not only a still image of your color grade, but it will also save all of the settings and adjustments that you make down here. It's more like saving a preset or kind of saving your color grade in addition to a still image. It's not just a still image. It's kind of a kind of a weird way to say that, but that's what it's called. Behind the gallery, we have our LUTs browser. Here you can navigate to any LUTs that you have installed on your system, and you can preview a LUT just by mousing over it, and you can see what it does to your image in the viewer. Behind the LUTs, we have the media pool, and this is where all of your media lives for your project. From the media pool, you can't really open any piece of media here in the color page. This is kind of for other pages, but you can import media if you need to, and you can navigate in between your different timelines. To the right of the viewer, we have our nodes. This is something that can be pretty intimidating for some people, especially if you've never used nodes before, but basically what it is is a flowchart, and any adjustment that we make down here in our color palettes lives inside of a node. So we might have a node where we're focusing on adjusting exposure, and we can turn that off and on by clicking on its number, and maybe another node that focuses on saturation and temperature, maybe another one that focuses on contrast, or you can do all of these adjustments just in one node. This is just kind of a way to keep organized and kind of split up your steps if you want to, and this is where the nodes live. Up here next to the nodes, we have effects. If I click on that, this will open up our effects library. This is where we can load any kind of open effect that we have installed on our system. So if we wanted to do something like add a blur, we can drag that onto a node. And now whatever runs through that node becomes blurry. Once you have a node with a open effect on it, your effects panel will switch to settings mode and you can adjust the settings for whatever that effect is. To the right of the effects button, we have the light box. If I click this, that will open up all of our shots from our project in full screen mode. This is great for getting a good idea of what your project looks like as a whole or navigating through big projects. I can hold down shift and select multiple shots if I need to. Great way to work. And I can close that again by hitting Lightbox. Down here in the lower half of the screen, we have our color palettes. These are what let you adjust the colors of whatever image you have selected. And they're gonna be active in whatever node you have selected. So I'll select this first exposure node. Just to make things simpler, I'm gonna right click and say reset all grades and nodes. So we're just using one node. And here on the left, we have our primary color wheel. This is where you can adjust the color cast and the brightness of different parts of the image. The lift being the darkest parts, the gamma being the midtones, and the gain being the brightest parts. So if we want our bright parts to be warm, we can take the gain wheel and push it warm. And if we want the darkest parts to be cool, we can take the lift and push it cool. And now we have this kind of split tone looking image. If we want to brighten or darken any part of the image, we use these little wheels down here. These are called the master wheels. The offset adjusts the entire image. The gain is the brightest parts. The gamma are the midtones, and the lift are the darkest parts. These little sliders around here are called our primary controls. You can grab any of these little sliders and move them back and forth to adjust that number by that control. So if I grab this and push it to the right, we're putting more contrast into our image. If we take this and push it to the left, that's removing contrast. Same thing for saturation. I can grab this and push it to the right and add a little more saturation. I can move the hues around, open this up and play with it. This is kind of the main tool that you'll be using in the color page, but I'll give you a quick overview of the other stuff. To the right of that, we have the curves, and this lets you adjust the tones of the image. This upper right 
dot being the white point of the image. So I can push that up and to the left to brighten everything up. The darker part being the, the black point. And I can push this down and to the right and darken it. And I can stretch out this middle like a rubber band or even add my own kind of tone curve here that'll give me a custom contrast for my image. There are also these other little types of curves which can take something like a specific color, let's say like this lamp, and we can move it around and adjust just that color. So we can make all of the yellow things kind of purplish. And there are a lot of different ways to adjust our image with these various curves. And on this right side, we have our keyframes. This lets you adjust anything that's animated inside of the color page. You can view any value that changes over time here. Just a second, ResolveCon 2022 is happening October 1st and 2nd, and I want you there. We're gonna have live Resolve teaching, discussion panels, and tons of giveaways. It's gonna be a blast. It's the DaVinci Resolve learning event of the year, sponsored by Blackmagic Design, and the best part is it's totally free and you can watch it streamed on YouTube right here. All you have to do is register down below in the description, okay? Okay. Let's get back to the video. All of these little buttons up here switch out the various palettes for the color page. We'll just start on the left here. We have our camera raw. This is where you adjust things like ISO, exposure, color temperature for anything that you have shot in raw. This only works if you have a raw clip selected. Next, we have the color match palette, which you can use to match two shots where you have a color checker chart. Primary color wheels, we already went over. One thing to note is that there are also log wheels, and the difference here is that even though these are called shadow, midtone, and highlights, the shadows have a very specific range, as well as the highlights have a specific range that you can adjust with these little controls here, and you can adjust exactly how much they mess with the image, whereas the normal primary wheels, you don't really have that kind of control. It adjusts the whole image in a much more generalized way. It's just a little bit stronger in the brightest parts, midtones, or darkest parts. Next, we have the HDR grade, which is kind of like the log wheels, but even more intense. This splits up the image in six different tones by default, letting you isolate a correction for the very, very brightest parts, the not so bright, the slightly bright parts, the kind of bright parts, the shadows, the darker parts, and the really, really dark parts. So it gives you a lot of control over your color tones, your exposure, saturation for each part of the image but really easy to get a little too deep and a little confused and kind of break your image a little bit here too. Next, we have the RGB mixer. This is a way to kind of remap your color channels. By default, red has 100% red, green has 100% green, and blue has 100% blue, but you can kind of mix these up and do something like use the green channel for the blue channel and get some really interesting effects. Next, we have motion effects. This is studio only, which means it's just in the paid version. And here's where you can do noise reduction, as well as motion blur. Some really, really powerful stuff here, especially if you have noisy footage. To the right of that, we have the curves, which we've talked about. We have the color warper, which will let you pick certain colors by their hue and saturation and kind of remap them in a little bit different way than you would with the curves. So I could take something kind of like this yellowish green and I could desaturate it using the color warper to kind of get rid of those tones. I can also take the tones that exist and change their hue by moving this around like a clock and get some really interesting effects. This is great for establishing like a custom color palette, emphasizing or de-emphasizing certain hues, that kind of thing. Next, we have the qualifier, which lets you pick a certain color. I'll turn on highlight mode right here and we can see a preview of just the colors it's selecting and we can kind of adjust the selection with these little controls down here. And I can do something like just select this pink and then I can use that selection for anything I wanna do in this node so if I want to affect just the skin, but I want to brighten it, I can push it up in the curves, I can do all kinds of things. This is really powerful, but again, pretty easy to break. Making this selection is quite an art in itself. So before you jump into something like this, I definitely recommend something like the hue curves or even the color warper to see if you can get the job done without having to make a selection based on eyedroppering the image. Next to the qualifier, we have the windows. These are like masks. You make a shape and whatever you do in the rest of the color palettes is only going to happen inside of that shape. You can even do something like select something and move to this next palette, which will let you track this window. And it will do a really good job motion tracking that window to whatever you want. And from there, you can adjust the window and get some pretty cool results without a whole lot of work by tracking that window. That's the tracker. We also have the magic mask, 
This again is studio only, so only in the paid version. But what we can do is draw on a subject that we want to isolate. And I'll hit this little button right here. This is toggle mask overlay. And it will highlight whatever it's selected in red. And now I can adjust this again separately from the rest of the footage. And I can track this as well. And it does a really good job of tracing out that subject. Next palette over is blur and sharpen. Usually you can just go to this radius right here and roll up or down on your mouse wheel. And so I can roll up to blur and I can roll down to sharpen. Depending on what you wanna do, that can be really helpful. Next palette is the key. A key lets you control any kind of mask or anything that you have connected to your node. But what's really handy is this key output gain. If let's say we have a correction that's just really, really pink, I can take this key output gain down and I can kind of dial in the strength of this node without having to do something like take this pink back like this. So if I have several different adjustments in this node, I can kind of fade them on or off using this key output gain. Very handy. Next palette over is sizing. This lets you zoom and rotate and adjust your image in various different ways. After that, we have the 3D palette, which is only available in the studio version and only if you have 3D content. So that's like stereoscopic content, like with two cameras, the kind of 3D that you'd wear glasses for. Next palette is keyframes, which we've talked about. Then we have our color scopes. These are essential for doing good color correction. I have a video on color scopes right here. Make sure to check that out but this is just a graph of the colors in your image. And the final little palette is the info palette, which shows all kinds of things like your file name, your version, your frame rate, your system information, all those nice things. But there is a lightning fast tour of the color interface. Again, if you want a printable PDF that kind of gives you a nice summary of all of these things, check that out right here. We have that for free at groundcontrol.film. Hey, thanks for sticking around. And by the way, if you're interested in learning the basics of DaVinci Resolve, we have a really awesome course right here. I bumped my, I bumped this, but you still understand what's going on right there. It goes through all of the basics of how DaVinci Resolve works and you can download project files and media and follow along and learn yourself some DaVinci Resolve. Oh baby, let's go. Hey, thank you so much for, for being, being here. I hope you have a great day.